Hi everyone, I want to talk about acute lymphoblastic leukemia and lymphoblastic lymphoma prognosis. Okay, that for you to enjoy this, please kindly watch my other presentations on ALL and LBL. Thank you. Before getting into the prognosis proper, I will have to talk about differential diagnosis here. First is acute myeloid leukemia or acute undifferentiated leukemia, mixed phenotype acute leukemia, chronic myeloid leukemia, aplastic anemia, Bucchus lymphoma, and HIV infectious mononucleosis, pertussis, osteomyelitis, thymoma, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and heavy metal toxicity. All those items on this page are non-malignant conditions. That is HIV, infectious mononucleosis, pertussis, osteomyelitis, thymoma, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and heavy metals are non-malignant conditions, but they are possible differential diagnosis. As far as who classification, that is World Health Organization classification is concerned when it comes to acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoblastic lymphoma, I uh, will pause a bit and you go through it, you can take a picture. Okay, let's go. Still on who classification, Acute lymphoblastic leukemia is divided into two types. The B cell, that is precursor B lymphoblastic cells, or T cell, that is precursor T lymphoblastic cells. Our French American British classification, which is classified into L1, L2, L3, but don't worry about that anymore because it's no longer involved. The worst clinical outcomes will be found in any individual with Philadelphia chromosome. That is BRC-ABL1 like, that is Philadelphia like, and IAMP21. IAMP21 We have worst outcomes. While on treatment or before treatment, do your lab investigations like renal function tests, liver function tests, PT, APTT, or fibrinogen, your calcium, potassium, phosphate, LGH, uric acid to rule out tumor lysis syndrome, or when you are already on treatment to know how far tumor lysis syndrome is occurring here. Then lumbar puncture for CSF to assay lymphoblast or leukemic cells. Maybe you are now dealing with leukemic meningitis or white blood cell counts, gram staining, proteins and glucose from the CSF. CSF findings that will determine CNF prophylaxis are one, no lymphoblast, two, less than five blasts per microliter, three, greater, greater than five blasts per microliter, CT, ED, or MRI if neuro symptoms. If there is a seated fever, please do blood culture gram staining and microscopy culture and sensitivity test. If you are suspecting viral infection, check 
for cytomegalovirus, virus, HIV, and hepatitis B virus. If anthocycline is to be used, then let's have echocardiogram done. And if hematopoietic transplantation is anticipated, please HLE typing will be necessary. If diagnosis of T cell ALS slash FBL is made, have CT chest for mediastinal mass. A good prognosis will be found in individuals that are young and between ages two to nine years. That will have a good outcome. If the white blood cell count is then than 30 times 10 raised to power nine per liter, that'd be great. T cell phenotype will be better compared to B cells. Absence of Philadelphia chromosome will be great. Early attainment of complete remission will all be nice. So, good prognosis will involve young age, white blood cell less than 30, T cell phenotype, absence of Philadelphia chromosome, early achievement of complete remission. On the other hand, bad prognosis will be found in older kids. White blood cell count greater than 30 times 10 raised to power 9 per liter. B cell phenotype, presence of translocation 922, that is Philadelphia chromosome and late attainment of complete remission. Survivor. Childhood acute lymphoblastic leukemia will have about 75% surviving more than five years. While adulthood acute lymphoblastic leukemia will have less than 40% surviving more than five years. With that, I come to the end of this series of presentations on childhood cancer, except that of brain tumors and spinal cord tumor. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get these publications immediately they are released. Thank you.